There are two ways to name alkyl halides. They're both straightforward. First, there are what most people call common names, the names that chemists use to talk about these compounds when they're talking about them among themselves. And then there are the systematic names, the names that are formed using a set of rules. First, let me talk about the common names. Using common names, we simply say that name of the alkyl group that the halide is attached to, followed by the word iodide as a separate word. This is methyl iodide. Here I've shown isopropyl as the group. I've drawn it two ways because it can be confusing and I wanted you to see both. And we call this compound isopropyl bromide. It's no different for rings. This is a cyclopentyl group that has fluorine attached. We call it cyclopentyl fluoride. Now there are three special structures that you should learn. One is the carbon that has two halogens attached. I've shown chlorine here because that's the most common. The CH2 is the methylene group, so this is called methylene chloride. It might seem a little odd, but it's not methylene dichloride, it's methylene chloride. When we have a carbon that has three halogens attached, it's chloroform or bromoform or iodoform. Here I've shown chlorine, so it's chloroform. And then finally, the compound that has four chlorines attached is carbon tetrachloride. So these three bottom ones have special names and you should learn them. For the others, you'll simply name the alkyl group and then as a separate word, the halide that's attached. Let's look at the systematic names. First, I have some good news. I say good news because you probably already know how to use the systematic nomenclature to name alkanes. It's the same system for alkyl halides. The IUPAC system does not recognize alkyl halide as a special functional group. So these guys are named as alkanes with halide as a substituent. You use the rules then like you'd use them for alkanes. First, you find the longest chain and write the corresponding alkane name. Second, you will name each of the substituents attached to that chain. And as you do, you'll place them in front of the alkane name in alphabetical order. Then you'll need to number the chain and you'll begin at the end that's closest to a substituent. Next, you'll use the numbers of the various carbon atoms to say where the substituents are by putting the corresponding number in front of each substituent. And finally, there may be stereochemical designations that you need to put at the front of the name, R or S, cis or trans. Let's take a look at a couple examples. You know that we would call the top compound ethyl bromide in the common nomenclature. In the systematic nomenclature, we'll find the longest chain, that's two carbons, and number it. We'll begin numbering on the carbon that has a substituent. So this will be ethane. It has two carbons. It has a substituent, bromo. And that substituent is on the one carbon, one bromoethane. Here's another small, almost trivial case. It's methane that has three chlorines attached. We're going to call this 111 trichloromethane. Now the fact is, in these top two cases, there's only one way to number these compounds. So some people would simply say to leave off the numbers and call it bromoethane and trichloromethane. Now let's look at a real case. We need to find the longest chain. I'll put dots on the carbons. And in this chain, there are seven carbon atoms, so we call this a heptane. There's a methyl substituent, two ethyl substituents, and a fluoro substituent. And we need to put these in alphabetical order. Ethyl comes before fluoro, comes before methyl. So we have these substituents in alphabetical order, and now we need to put numbers to show where they are along the chain. We'll number the chain from the end that's closest to a substituent. If we start on the end at the right, we come to a substituent on the one, two, third carbon. But if we use the end at the left, we come to a substituent on the second carbon. So we'll number starting here and place the appropriate numbers. We have two ethyl groups on the three carbon. So this is 3,3-diethyl. Three, three the fluorine is on the carbon number 5, 5-fluoro, five and the methyl group is on carbon number 2. 
Notice that the numbers that the substituents are on have nothing to do with the order that we write the substituents in the name. It's strictly alphabetical. E, we don't count the D for die. E comes before F, comes before M. And there's our name. With one exception. We haven't yet said what the stereochemistry is, and yet we see that there's stereochemistry on carbon-5. It's a stereogenic center. We need to name it as either R or S. Now we assign chirality as R or S by first assigning the priority of the four groups that are attached to the stereogenic carbon. Fluorine is heavier than carbon, so it's first priority, and hydrogen is the lightest, so it's the fourth priority. This CH2 is the same as that CH2, but then we go to a CH3, and over here we find a carbon with other carbons attached. So this substituent is 2, while this is priority number 3. With that fourth group oriented away from us, we go from 1 to 2 to 3 in a circle. We find ourselves going counterclockwise, so this is S. The full name, S-3,3-diethyl, 5-fluoral, 2-methylheptane. We can apply the same system to ring compounds as well. First, a simple example. We looked at a compound like this for common names. This would be cyclopentyl chloride. In the systematic nomenclature, we'll notice that this is a cyclopentane, and it has one substituent, the chloro group. To be completely and fully correct, we'll put a 1 at the beginning, although we realize it's not really needed because a single substituent is always on the 1 carbon by definition. In any case, for a full name that's complete, we'll call this 1-chlorocyclopentane. Let's look at a slightly more interesting case. Now we see we have two substituents on a cyclohexane ring. We need to identify these two substituents and put them in alphabetical order in front of the name. That would be bromo and methyl. Then we need to number the ring so we can say where those substituents are. Because bromine comes at the beginning of the name, we'll start by calling the carbon that has bromine carbon 1. So now we're ready to put a 1 in front of the bromo and a 4 in front of methyl. Now there are no stereogenic centers in this compound, but there's still stereochemistry. So we have to say whether the substituents are on the same side of the ring or on opposite sides of the ring. In this case, they're on opposite sides of the ring, so we'll call it trans. Though the full name is trans 1 bromo 4 methyl cyclohexane. Using the systematic nomenclature as it's applied to alkanes, we can name all the alkyl halides.